As an atheist, I am often the unfortunate recipient of complaints from theists who reject non-theistic explanations for the origin of the universe, life, or species. One such complaint I hear frequently on YouTube is, how could all this complexity have arisen from simple matter? When I hear this complaint, or the many variations of it, I have to wonder if the person speaking is living in the same universe I am, given how many known examples there are of complexity emerging from simplicity. Even with the known examples, we can easily demonstrate complexity rising from simplicity using a thought experiment. Imagine a limitless field of sand or a very large beach, and on this beach is a beetle we will call Bob. Further imagine the sand around Bob is divided into sections with a simple grid, and that each patch of sand has a particular value to Bob. At the start of the experiment, all grid squares have the value zero. Our friend Bob only does three things in life, count, add, and move. He starts counting at one, then adds, then moves. After moving, he counts one more, going to two, then adds, and moves. Then he counts one more, going to three, and so forth. Bob can't count any higher than eight, so once he reaches eight, he will go back to one on his next count. After counting, Bob adds his current count to the grid cell he is in, changing its value. To keep the numbers from getting too big, let's say that if a, if a cell is set to a number bigger than 8, the value of the cell rolls over. Think of it as adding a value and then subtracting 9 until the value produced is 8 or less. So 8 plus 1 equals 9, minus 9 equals 0. 7 plus 3 equals 10, minus 9 equals 1. 6 plus 6 equals 12, minus 9 equals 3, and so forth. Finally, after adding, Bob moves. He can only move one cell in any direction, and the direction he moves will be based on the value of the cell he is in. According to this compass, one means go northwest, two go north, three go northeast, and so forth. Zero means don't move. If a cell is zero after Bob adds to it, he will not move and will go on to count and add again in the same cell. The nature of this little world we have created is simple. The rules that Bob follows are very simple. I've set up these rules with no particular end in mind. What will Bob do if we turn him loose? Let's find out. First Bob counts one. Then he adds it to the cell that it's in. Then based on his compass and based on the value that the cell is in, he moves. In this case one means move northwest. Once he's there, Bob goes back to the count stage. He counts two. He adds that to the cell he's in. Now he's in a cell that has the value 2, so based on his compass, he moves north. Now he counts 3 and repeats the process, and so forth. Having reached 8, Bob can't count any higher, so the next time he counts, he will count 1 again. Since you will do this over and over, let's call a series of eight counts, adds, and moves a generation. So this is where Bob is at the end of generation one. Let's mark the generation in yellow so it's easier to see. Bob's current cell contains an eight, so he has to move west. This will take him back to the cell he started in. Now he counts one, adds it to the current cell, and must move north per the compass. Now, when he reaches this cell, Bob's count is 4, but 4 plus 5 equals 9, and cells can only have values ranging from 0 to 8. The current value would be 1 more than 8, so the cell value rolls over by subtracting 9 to give the next value following 8, which is 0. Bob sees 0 as an instruction to remain in the same place and skip his move, per the compass. So he stays in the cell, and counts again, reaching 5. He adds 5 to the cell, which sets it back to the same value it had before, and then moves southeast, per the compass. Adding 6 to 6 yields 12, so the cell value rolls over by subtracting 9, 
yielding 3. Let's shift to the right so we can see Bob. 3 plus 8 is 11, so we subtract 9, giving 2. This is where Bob is at the end of Generation 2. He begins Generation 3 by moving north, counting 1 and adding it. Bob's activities will rapidly extend beyond our field of view, so let's use tables to show his progress. Here's Generation 3. The red square shows Bob's starting position at the beginning of the experiment. The blue square shows his position now. And here's Generation 4. 5, and so on. As time progresses, the shape that Bob draws becomes more and more complex. By generation 10,000, the only way to represent it is to simply replace the numbers with dots. The arrow shows Bob's current position. Advancing forward to 25,000 generations, we can see Bob has a sort of southwesterly trend to his movement, but the shape he draws becomes more complex with each passing moment. The red arrow shows his starting point, the green arrow his current position. 50,000 75,000 100,000 125,000 The circled bits at the bottom are places where Bob has drawn the exact same shapes before disappearing back into the body of the colored region. There's a sort of structure starting there. 150,000. This fantastic shape is so huge, I've had to compress the dots to fit it all on the frame. Want to see it regular size? I'd like to draw your attention to this part of Bob's handiwork. Bob has achieved periodicity, which is to say, after 150,000 generations, that's 1.2 million moves, he has begun drawing the exact same shape over and over, like beads on a necklace. Here's what one looks like up close. Each bead takes about 3,500 generations to make. That's 280,000 moves. I think it somewhat beautiful looking, and certainly complex. Now that Bob has achieved an intricate periodicity, which is totally emergent and not by design, he will continue to draw this exact shape forever. Imagine then wandering onto this beach after a thousand years and discovering Bob drawing this involved shape over and over again with a long line of these beautiful beads stretching off to the northeast as far as the eye could see. Doubtless, one might be inclined to think Bob had been designed with an instruction set to draw this specific shape. But they'd be utterly wrong. Bob's behavior is just the expression of very simple rules on a system that feeds back upon itself, just like nature. In fact, this can be demonstrated simply by changing the starting conditions. If we wind the clock all the way back to the beginning and set the value of Bob's starting cell to 2 instead of 0, what happens? Here's what we find, 79,000 generations later. Apart from the southwesterly trend, this shape looks nothing like the previous one. And further, Bob has found a new periodicity, drawing a stairway of tiny steps heading off to the northwest. From simplicity, complexity. If you enjoyed this video, please rate and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.